Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about frequency separation and dodge and burn and the differences between the two skin retouching techniques. So I have had quite a few questions about both techniques and which one should I use, which one should I use in which situation or which one is better and there's a lot of pros and cons to both of the retouching techniques that I'm about to talk about and I'm not going to be showing you guys how to make uh, dodge and burn layers or how to make frequency separation layers today because I've done other videos on those so you can check them out if you like. This is just going to be explaining the differences between the both and where I would use which technique or what sort of photographs I would use each technique on. So to start off with primarily these days I am a beauty photographer and most of my work is studio beauty photography. So I do find that dodge and burn is the main choice of skin retouching technique that I do use and it's not very often that I will use frequency separation. So today I do want to do a quick retouch with this photo here and show you guys what dodge and burn would look like and what effect frequency separation would give. Just to show you guys the difference and why I prefer to use dodge and burn on my beauty photography. I am going to go first off though and say that frequency separation I think is best used for images that are a little bit further away, not so close up, and it's a really good tool to use for a lot of weddings and portraiture. Any sets of images where you have quite a lot to edit, it is a quicker tool generally to use in terms of skin retouching. Uh, you will save a lot of time by using frequency separation, however it doesn't always work that well I feel on closer up images. It doesn't retain the texture a lot of the time that I need, especially with beauty photography like this portrait here. But to display what it actually does and why I would use Dodge and Burn in this way, I'm going to do a quick retouch now of both of them and show you guys what the difference is. Okay, so we've got our Dodge and Burn layers now here over in the Layers tab. So we're ready to pretty much start dodging and burning and I'm going to show you guys what that would look like first on this image. So dodging and burning is using the paintbrush tool generally to add light and dark to the image and a lot of the time this is done as micro dodging and burning some people will zoom quite far in I personally don't like to zoom too far in because it does tend to look a bit smooth a lot of the time when you zoom back out again um, so I like to make sure that as much texture is retained as possible and usually I find dodge and burn is the best way to do this because it gives you a lot of control over the skin overall so I'm going to begin dodging and burning now and show you guys the result So as you can see, I am getting into these, just these little crevices just here and lightening them up to smooth and even out the skin tone overall. And that is basically what Dodge and Burn will do for your photographs. You can use it to add stronger highlights as well in the image and even deeper shadows as well. So I'll show you guys the basics of this and then zoom through and show you the main parts and we'll get to the end result a little bit quicker. Okay, so this is the finished version of my Dodge and Burn retouch. So as you can see, the texture is pretty much intact. And if I go back to the original now, you can see that it's really just evened out the skin tone nicely, but it still looks quite natural and even. So that's one of my favorite ways to do skin retouching, particularly with Dodge and Burn uh, with beauty photography, because I do think you have the most control overall with skin retouching in that sense. 
Now I'm going to do a frequency separation technique and show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so with my frequency separation layers, I have my high layer, which is the high frequency. This is the texture layer and then the low layer. And this is more or less like for colored blemishes and things like that underneath the skin tone, underneath the skin texture. So I'm going to start retouching on both of these layers and show you guys the final result. So this is the low frequency separation layer and as you can see it is quite blurred and I'm going to start using the healing tools. Generally I use the healing brush tool if I'm doing frequency separation and then making that bigger and holding down alt on the keyboard and then just kind of stamping in where I think the extra texture should go. You can also use the patch tool to do this. Okay, so now I have turned the texture layer back on top. I have used the patch tool on the low frequency layer to try and get rid of some of the extra texture. But as you can see, this is one of the problems that I tend to run into with frequency separation sometimes is really removing too much of the texture on the bottom layer. And once that happens, there's not too much turning back. Um, depending on how you do use the frequency separation layers, of course, there are other ways to use them. I just don't like basically how the texture does turn out like that, but we are going to go back a little bit and just remove some of those patch tool parts. And then I'm going to keep retouching on this low frequency layer and see how we go. I almost find that frequency separation can take away too much to, of the texture sometimes. So I do find you, you have to be light handed in a sense on this layer, but unfortunately sometimes it's not that easy because you do need to get that even skin tone. And this is sometimes the only way to do it is by working on this layer much more than the above texture layer, the high frequency layer. So sometimes it's just a matter of being a little bit more light handed. Um, that's why I usually use the healing brush tool because I do tend to find that it makes the texture a little bit easier to um, replicate in the skin. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back on the texture layer and I guess you can see that it's not really ideally how I'd like the skin to look. You can kind of see that the texture has been removed too much, even though I haven't really gone over this layer too much. Uh, it does look mottled and, and quite uh, untextured in areas and you can see that there's been a retouch on there. So this is basically why I don't like to use frequency separation on my beauty images. I understand wholeheartedly though that dodge and burn is not always a practical alternative for retouching, uh, especially like I said earlier for wedding photographers, for general portraiture photographers, sometimes frequency separation is the best way to go and there are definitely ways you can be a little bit more light handed with it and create a great effect from it. I have used it many times in the past on my fashion images in particular, but I do find for close up beauty it doesn't quite have the effect that I'd like for it to have. So I'm going to take a snapshot and show you guys what the dodge and burn looks like as opposed to the frequency separation. So just a close up of the dodge and burn. So this is what dodge and burn looks like close up and you can see that all the texture is pretty much intact. So I would actually go in and remove some more of that texture with dodge and burn probably by using some of the healing tools because there is a lot there still. Uh, but let's go to the frequency separation edit and you can see that just it's not quite as smooth It's not quite as even there is that texture missing in parts of the skin tone and it is hard at times to Replicate that on the low frequency layer So I do find if you're editing anything close up dodge and burn does tend to be a really good way to use it for especially for macro photography macro skin and that sort of thing is really great with dodge and burn. 
Frequency separation, it can be okay. It doesn't really look like I've actually done much on this frequency separation layer, but I actually have, um, which is crazy because I did sit here for a little bit editing using the frequency separation technique. So uh, I did actually spend a bit of time. So even though Dodge and Burn was very time consuming as well, uh, I do think in the end, the effect does tend to be better with that for close-up portrait. It's definitely something that I would highly recommend using. And I'll also do a before and after of the original and the frequency separation layer as well. So the original is this one here, and that is the frequency separation edit. So back to the dodge and burn layer, and I'm just gonna leave it on that note. And what do you guys personally prefer to use when it comes to beauty photography or up close portraiture? Do you prefer frequency separation or do you prefer dodge and burn? Because each to their own and there is no right or wrong way with retouching. It's whatever you're comfortable with using and whatever you think gives the best effect in the end. I have been using dodge and burn for quite a while now, so I'm very used to getting images out and spending a couple of hours editing them at times, but I do love the effect that it gives overall and it does suit my style of photography and the style of lighting that I use in studio as well. So thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what else you'd like to see on my channel and what other videos you really want to see me make because I will be filming more in future. And if you haven't checked out my presets already, they are all listed on my website as usual. So you can go and check them out and any purchases made will actually go back to supporting this channel and supporting my work. So thank you guys so much for watching again and I will see you next time. Bye.